Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, February the 22nd, 2016. Here are our top stories. Tonight, roving reporter Richard Reeves on the Nevada campaign trail. After that, constitutional Sheriff Mack on the state of U.S. law enforcement. And filmmaker Kevin Booth on the case for legalizing marijuana. That's next. And I was coming to him to work on another marijuana documentary, documentary and, and he said, uh, I've got this other thing that I want to point you towards in the meantime, and it's Bulgaria. And of course my response was, you know, I thought he was out of his mind. Next thing you know it, I'm in Bulgaria, and it's, it's the weirdest place on earth. And I'm just going to give the mic over to, to Big Mike here to tell the story, but basically, you know, he, he has a company, Advanced Nutrients, is the biggest company on the globe that makes it, they don't make marijuana, they make everything you need to grow the finest, cleanest cannabis there is, you know, working to make it a clean. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new, groundbreaking, gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, of course, by now, you know that Donald Trump won the South Carolina primary. We're going to take a look at the results of that and the impact that that's going to have on the future. Of course, that puts Trump on the side of history. As the Washington Post points out, the South Carolina winner in the last six of the seven contested GOP primary winners have gone on to win the party's nomination. Only Newt Gingrich from neighboring Georgia broke that pattern. So going back all the way to 1980, no one has won the South Carolina primary without also winning the GOP nomination. And those who won both South Carolina and New Hampshire, there has never been a GOP nominee who did not win both of those. Or putting it another way, anyone who won both of those primaries went on to win the nomination. Now, perhaps the biggest news, however, this last weekend might be the exit of Jeb Bush from the uh, race. His support was minuscule. Looking at the polls, that looks like he only has 1% support in Nevada, according to the last poll that was taken just before he exited the race. So it isn't going to make much difference there. However, even though he had very small support, he was doing a lot to oppose Marco Rubio, spending a tremendous amount of his war chest that was supposed to scare off all opposition, spending a great deal of that against Marco Rubio. And of course, most of his money came from a few giant donors, and it went into super PACs. It was soft money. It wasn't hard money that went to uh, Jeb Bush directly to pay for his staff. He was in a very tight situation when it came to paying for staff. That's one of the reasons he got out. Nevertheless, he had a lot of money, a huge war chest, uh, over $150, $150 million in his super PAC funds. Of course, the Right to Rise PAC hit uh, the state airwaves with a lot of opposition to Marco Rubio. Amazingly, what he attacked him on was immigration. <laughs> Not so much that the two of them disagreed on immigration, but that Marco Rubio had changed his position. First, he was uh, for open, well, he was against it when he ran as, for senator, and then once he got elected, he betrayed the Republican voters who had voted for them. So Jeb Bush was trying to make a, uh, a, a point on that, score points with the Republicans, and yet 
He was opposed to what the mo most of the Republicans want to see, and that is to not have open immigration. So it was a losing strategy for Jeb Bush from the very beginning. And of course, uh, many in the GOP establishment, they saw this as a primary for who was going to represent the GOP establishment. Was it going to be Rubio, Bush, or Kasich? They called on him to leave, and that is what he has now done. Now, Marco Rubio looks to be the person who is going to pick up the uh, establishment backing. He was one who had picked it up in South Carolina. He had Trey Gowdy. He had a popular congressman there with him, as well as the governor of South Carolina touring with him. Nevertheless, he came in a distant second to Donald Trump in that area. And as he was doing it, just before the election, as Richard Reeves, our reporter in South Carolina, pointed out, he backed out at the last minute of a uh, debate, a town hall meeting that was going to be on immigration with uh, Ben Carson and with Ted Cruz. At the last minute, he backed out of that. It was going to have about, well, it did have about 5,000 people. But he did something that was even more amazing this weekend. Uh, he accused Breitbart essentially of being a conspiracy theory website because they reported the remarks of ICE Council President Chris Crane. So, of course, it isn't whether or not uh, Rubio supported immigration because Jeb Bush supported it as well. The question was, did he betray the GOP voters? Now, Rubio slammed Breitbart on Fox News, talking to Neil Cavuto, saying Breitbart was not a credible source, and they reported his flip-flopping. He called Breitbart News basically a conspiracy theory website. Now, this was an interview that Breitbart had with ICE Council President Chris Crane. He was present at the Gang of Eight hearings, and he says he was thrown out of those hearings. Marco Rubio said, well, he's not an ICE official, he's just the head of a union, and it's being reported on a website that's not a credible source. Neil Cavuto said, you mean Breitbart? And he says, yeah, it's a conspiracy theory website. Now, Marco Rubio has written op-ed pieces for Breitbart in the past. Breitbart then went on to talk to law enforcement uh, agents, pointed out also that Senator Jeff Sessions has called that individual, Chris Crane, an American hero because he blew the whistle on immigration corruption. And now when he blows a whistle on Marco Rubio, Marco Rubio calls him a conspiracy theorist because he's not going to call him directly a liar. Now, Breitbart talked to several sheriffs. Uh, one of them was present at the hearing. Sheriff Tom Hodgson of Bristol County, Massachusetts, confirmed Crane's account. He said, I was down there. When the Gang of Eight did their press conference, I was standing right next to him. He was definitely removed from the event. He wasn't doing anything inappropriate. He was just trying to ask a question, and they asked him to leave. And essentially, they threw him out. Now, Marco Rubio is saying that he has a path to the nomination. He claims, using, again, a talking point from Karl Rove, because that's what robots do. They just robotically repeat the talking points that are fed to them by the establishment. And this is something that Karl Rove floated months ago about Donald Trump, saying that Donald Trump only has 30 to 40 percent of the vote. And, of course, Rubio says that everyone is going to vote for him because he's the establishment candidate. Now, the reality is, is that the establishment vote is Rubio plus Jeb Bush plus Kasich. And that has a ceiling of 30 to 40 percent, not the other way around. Rubio is really Romney 2.0. As Politico points out, he has the same policy platforms as Mitt Romney. He has the same brain trust. He has the same key figures. Marco Rubio is essentially Mitt Romney without the eligibility to run for president. He is part of the same global establishment that supports open borders, that supports a global managed trade regime, as well as global taxation through a phony climate treaty. And we can see the kinds of people who are part of that trust. We just see uh, in an article from The Hill, a secret anti-Trump donor has been revealed. And guess who this person is? One individual who provided 75% of the funding of the only serious anti-Trump super PAC to date. This person is Marlene Ricketts, matriarch of the Ricketts family that owns the Chicago Cubs baseball team, contributed $3 million to the anti-Trump super PAC, our principal's PAC, which is being run by, guess who? A former Mitt Romney advisor. And of course, they have run $4 million in negative ads against uh, Donald Trump. So you can see how the lines are being drawn between the establishment candidates and the non-establishment candidates like Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Now, Glenn Beck has said that the death of Scalia was something that was arranged by God so that Ted Cruz could get through. It may not end up that way because 
Scalia was an originalist, the kind of judge that uh, Ted Cruz said he would appoint, but the same kind of judge that would say that he was not eligible to run for president. And when it comes to the confirmation hearings, many people are saying that Ted Cruz must recuse himself both from the Judiciary Committee and from the final vote because whoever is appointed is likely going to have to rule on his eligibility if he wins the nomination. Obama had this to say about the future of the Supreme Court appointments today. Uh, like me, some of you might be in the final year of your last term, working as hard as you can uh, to get as much done as possible for uh, the folks that you represent. Uh, fixing roads, educating our children, uh, helping people retrain, appointing judges, the usual stuff. <laughs> A very different story from Obama than we heard when there was 18 months left in George Bush's administration. Senator Obama, as well as Senator Schumer, said they should not have another Supreme Court justice replacement because there were eight, only 18 months left in that administration, far less time now. And of course, there was a 1960 resolution by the Democrat Party saying essentially the same thing. Can we count on the GOP to allow this to be appointed by the next president Republican or Democrat, or will they cave like they did on the climate treaties? Now, looking forward, we have a report coming up uh, later, an interview with Sheriff Mack about the movement against a sheriff that is in Oregon. They're extending this beyond the people who are protesting in Oregon. We have the Department of Justice now looking to tweak the Patriot Act and prosecute anti-government extremists, an article on Infowars.com. But first, here's a report from John Bound. While America boils with betrayal by the now naked criminal New World Order establishment, plainly verified by the trouncing Donald Trump whipped on dynastic pawn Jeb Bush and his inability to win even one delegate, the Department of Justice ramps up its mind war to once again sell the notion that domestic extremism far outweighs the threat of radical Muslim extremism. Kurt Nimmo writes, In October, with little fanfare, the Justice Department created a new position to emphasize the threat the government says it faces from so-called domestic extremists. John Carlin, in charge of the Department of Justice's National Security Division, told a seminar on terrorism at George Washington University, the event hosted by the Southern Poverty Law Center, that government and law enforcement now consider individuals and groups opposed to the authority of the state to be the top terrorism concern, a threat he said overshadows Muslim extremism. Carlin added that the Southern Poverty Law Center and other groups in this space are very important. In 2010, Infowars noted the Department of Homeland Security considers the SPLC to be a de facto division of the federal government. You know, the mask is coming off and they're there, you don't have to get a FOIA request anymore to find out that it turns out the Mayak report was written by Southern Poverty Law Center. What they're doing, though, is they're brainwashing, and that's why we have to counter that with our own, like, deprogramming of the brainwashing. They, they want them to believe that, you know, essentially, if you talk like Thomas Jefferson, you must be a terrorist, is, 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 is their bottom line. Having police that aren't brainwashed into supporting the criminal banking takeover, that is a danger to the criminals. So, But the criminals are... Are literally in there, you know, advising the police. In April of 2009, a document produced by the Department of Homeland Security, Right Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling Resurgence in Radicalization and Recruitment, characterized patriot political groups that reject federal authority in favor of state or local authority or reject government authority entirely as domestic terrorists. Reuters reported that in early February, Justice Department officials asked Congress for a statute to toughen the fight against anti-government extremists. A similar law is currently used to prosecute individuals accused of providing material support for Muslim terrorist groups currently on the State Department's list of international terrorist organizations. The Patriot Act codifies material support as distributing literature, political advocacy, and donating money to groups and individuals the government considers terrorists. An individual does not need to be involved in violence to be prosecuted. Moreover, 
The government does not need to show that any specific act of terrorism has taken place or is being planned or even that a defendant intended to further terrorism, according to an ACLU white paper. If the government gets its wish and is permitted to use the material support statute against nonviolent constitutionalists, members patriot groups, and those rejecting the authority of the state over the individual, supporters of Alex Jones and Infowars, characterized by the SPLC as extremists, may eventually be prosecuted as terrorists. There is clearly a hidden agenda to water down patriotic voices with the intent of strengthening the liberal psyop. Take this into account. Paul Joseph Watson writes, as Twitter suspended the account of yet another conservative for the crime of having the wrong politics, an account called Kill Donald Trump that advocates assassinating the Republican frontrunner is still active six months later. Despite representing an obvious violation of Twitter's terms of service, which state that users must not engage in violent threats, direct or indirect, the account Kill Donald Trump has not been suspended. So we have a constant deluge of people openly advocating and in some cases actually saying they will directly plan the assassination of Donald Trump. Twitter does absolutely nothing, but they will censor a conservative journalist for criticizing feminism. They will de-verify a prominent conservative journalist, Milo Yiannopoulos. Again, for what reason, nobody knows. Essentially, as the borders remain open and nearly 60% of illegal immigrants identified by the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement as criminal threats are not deported and are eventually released onto the streets of America, the establishment, drunk with power after quietly for all intents and purposes legalizing propaganda in July of 2013, means to saturate the American psyche with a bombardment of social media from psychopathic leftists, federal propaganda, and Muslim extremism, bluntly violating the First Amendment in order to shut down the national conversation in America, criminally struggling to gain a foothold to support a totalitarian culture of fear and control. John Bound for Infowars.com. When government characterizes dissenters as terrorists and extremists, it's only a matter of time before they come after law enforcement itself. Coming up later in the program, we're going to talk to Sheriff Mack about the feds moving against an Oregon sheriff. We're also going to have an in-depth interview with filmmaker Kevin Booth and Big Mike, the entrepreneur behind Advanced Nutrients. We're going to talk about the failed war on drugs and the failed nation state of Bulgaria. And as we look at this, as we talked to them earlier, they tell us that the only chance that they have in Bulgaria is alternative media and the internet. The best way to support InfoWars is to sign up for AutoShip. It gets you a 10% discount on all the products that you buy at InfoWarsLife.com, and it guarantees that you'll get it on a regular basis without having to worry about the products being out of stock. Another way to support us is with a paid subscription to Prison Planet TV to get the news each night as it's happening in HD and access to all of Alex Jones's documentaries. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with the filmmaker of Ghost Nation. folks treating people like we, like we want to be treated that's why we developed nutraceuticals with dr group and other top researchers chemists scientists you name it he's one of our advisors to come up with products like anthroplex that is an original product that, that that he made just for us and this is a base system to make super male or super female vitality work even better it is natural it just helps get your body pumping and going in the way you need to be going. And Dr. Group is here till we go to break to tell us about the latest product at InfoWarsLife.com, Anthroplex, that out of the gates, and we do this all the time with a new product, we discount it out of the gates to get you to try it, knowing that you're going to love it, it'll sell out. So InfoWarsLife.com, Anthroplex, 15% off and free shipping. 
for the next two days only when you get it with super male or female vitality. Let's go to Dr. Group. Why, why do you call this the foundation to start the fire and then the super male takes you to the next level? Well, we, we just look at the base problem that's going on right now in all over the world, which is the endocrine disrupting chemicals, the amount of estrogen that men have, the femininity of men, and what's going on even in children right now with low testosterone levels, low sperm count levels, and the problems that in the attack that we're seeing on the endocrine systems of both male and female. So I'm always looking for ways to boost that and to make it more effective and naturally get the body to start producing these hormones and balancing themselves. So what we decided to do was how can we add a few other components in there that would actually boost the effectiveness of the super male vitality and at the same time address different issues that the male might have so sure. it would be a full approach. And one of those was zinc. And zinc is actually necessary for the production of testosterone. There's more and more studies coming out that zinc is essential for hormone balancing. What is in the goat weed? You've got one of the purest, strongest organic forms of it. What's so magic about the goat weed? Well, the horny goat weed was given that name because years ago in India, they noticed that the goat, a certain time of the year, this weed would grow and the goats would eat it and they would just go crazy with all the female go goats. So that's, that's how it was developed. It's called epimidium. And what that's been proven to do over thousands of years is increase sexual pleasure, help balance the male hormones. It can actually be used for women as well, but it really kind of resets and brings the hormone balance, improves sperm motility, and increases testosterone. Level. So it counters the stuff they've been throwing at us. Results yeah. will vary overall. All I know is dynamite. I mean, absolutely dynamite with the stamina, with the weightlifting, with the swimming. Folks, the new product is available. Anthroplex, available at InfoWarsLife.com. Dr. Group, thank you for developing this amazing product. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, joining me now are Michael Stromaitis. Is that very right? good? Okay, close enough. But close we call enough. him Big close Mike, enough. and we will do that Thank from you. here on out. <laughs> and Kevin Booth, a filmmaker who is no stranger to the Alex Jones audience. We have a wide range of topics to talk about here. Everything from drug legalization to what's going on in Bulgaria, uh, politics there. And we're going to break this into two segments. But first, let's talk about the the drug issues. And of course, Kevin Booth is uh, very well known to people for American Drug War back in 2007. A uh, classic picture on the cover of that movie, the uh, Iwo Jima takeoff, where you've got uh, SWAT team instead of Marines right. planting a rolled up uh, dollar <laughs> bill or hundred dollar bill. Cocaine, yeah. yeah, into a mountain of cocaine. Yep. Exactly. Because that's what it's about. It's the war on drugs, exposing that. You follow that up with a documentary in 2010, How Weed won the West. Yes, sir. And in that, you're talking about the uh, the legalization that is happening. That was at the forefront of right. legalization happening. I assume that's where the two of you met because you've been yep. involved in that sure. from the very yep. beginning. And uh, then American Drug War II in 2013. And now you're working on a documentary that has gotten you involved in w the political aspects of uh, some of this in, in Bulgaria. And we're going to be right. talking about that in the, in the next segment. But first, I want to talk about uh, what you've been doing, Big Mike. Now, you've you've been, you said from the day one, you've been talking about how these uh, uh, fertilizers and nutrients that, that you give people for growing things, you haven't been uh, hiding the fact that this is for cannabis. Yeah, at 23 years old, I, I grew my first marijuana crop. It, it was a failure. Uh, I, had a, I fell in love with the plant. And at one point, I was starting to take fertilizer from other companies and making them better. And... Gave it to a few friends, and they tried it. They said, you should be selling this stuff. And so we we did. In 2000, uh, started the company, uh, and uh, 
never hid the fact that these products were specifically made for cannabis. I did a lot of tissue samples mm -hmm. over many different strains, find out what that plant utilizes during the various stages of its growth. Very interesting because that's the sort of thing that we have seen happen with prohibition. Yeah. When they come in and they prohibit something, like we saw with alcohol prohibition, what you wound up with were, in many cases, much more concentrated forms of, of alcohol than they had before. So it was counterproductive in that way, but especially counterproductive in terms of uh, trying to uh, uh, control people's behavior, trying to, to keep a, a government that doesn't flow into corruption. Okay, And that's what we saw with alcohol prohibition. Mm -hmm. And so there's all these different, it, it's, it does exactly the opposite of people who want to cut down the use of marijuana uh, for whatever reason, and we can talk about the, the real uses of marijuana, yep. uh, but when they want to cut down on the use of marijuana, when they want to cut down on the use of alcohol by making prohibition, not only do they corrupt the government, not only do they destroy the Constitution and individual liberty, but they get exactly the opposite effect. That's why I tell many people, if you want to see guns explode on the streets with all kinds of new uh, innovations, yep. just pro do gun prohibition. You're going to see it explode. <laughs> That's yeah. what I mean, Mike. Mike is basically a product of of the government putting the genie in the bottle. Yeah. You get guys like Mike who yeah. are like smarter than the government and are going to figure out ways to make things better. Yeah. And uh, it's just funny. This it's the ultimate irony, I believe, on 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 these drug warriors that now, like the government now is just going to have to catch up to where all these other people are, like Mike because they have just sat on this thing like it's this horrible illegal substance mm -hmm. while everybody else is racing forward with uh, the technology and the science of it. And that applies all the way across the board. And, and really, because of drug prohibition, you've wound up with things that are really harmful, like meth, for example, yeah, okay, absolutely. they come in. Yeah. And instead of having, just like with, with alcohol prohibition, most people were uh, involved with beer or wine, then they went to hard liquor or they went to things that were made in, in bathtubs that were making people go blind. So you had that kind of of uh, unintended consequences, shall we say. Maybe many of us would say it's maybe not unintended. Okay, but in Texas, I thought it was very interesting because my background is I'm a pretty straight guy, okay? Yeah. I, don't, I don't drink, I have never done pot or anything, but I am vehemently opposed to prohibition. And so I want to talk to the people out there who are afraid of this because over and over again, I see on the right, we see people who are afraid of pot or other drugs and they just want the government to come in with an iron fist and stop it because I'm afraid of it. I don't care what you have to do to the country. I don't care what you have to do to the people. Just stop this, okay? Take away our freedoms, but make us safe from this thing we fear. And on the left, I see the same thing with guns. And yet we had a thing here in Texas just recently. We had our very first crack in marijuana prohibition here in Texas. Yeah. And it was because of a representative who is a conservative Christian libertarian, David Simpson. This is what he said. He said, I don't believe that when God made marijuana, he made a mistake that, God, that government needs to fix. In the name of protecting the public, certain substances have been declared evil and contraband. So evil are these substances that state and federal agents are empowered to enforce laws with little or no regard for constitutional protection of individual rights, the sanctity of one's home, or the right to travel freely. That's practically a Bill Hicks quote, by the way. Is I've it never really? heard that. So, is it yeah, really? That well, he's a very conservative. Bill Hicks, yeah. David Simpson funny. is a very conservative, straight up <laughs> cowboy, and he introduced a bill that would remove marijuana from the entire criminal code. Nice. Now, that did not go through, but one of the things that he was talking about in this was the fact that uh, he knew several patients in his jurisdiction who had children who had uncontrollable seizures. The only way they could do it control it was with marijuana okay yeah. yep. and so what he wound up getting they did not do take his approach and remove marijuana out of the legal code but they did carve in an exception for children who have that particular condition and it's interesting i find that most of these conditions are coming as adverse reactions to vaccines that's another topic we won't get into another irony okay yeah. exactly however now you have marijuana exemption for this one particular uh, yep. condition, yep. yet they still have it in as a Schedule One drug. Yeah, here, right. it, so you're talking here in Texas. It's it's a medical marijuana state. They allow CBD only oil with no narcotic effect. Here's the bad part about this this law. What what they put in? You must take tried two other prescription drugs from Big yeah. Pharma first mm -hmm. before you go to, and give medical marijuana a try, and you have to have two doctors yeah. write the prescription. So the barrier to entry is extremely high, and patients are suffering because of this. But it's good to see that the door is open for CBD, because now that the door is open, it's gonna be a, a leave, leave a, an opportunity for a bigger and uh, more in-depth uh, discussion later on 
and eventually you'll see that medical marijuana will become a reality here in Texas. Uh, the Texas is not going to allow all these other states to, to, to have this industry, and they're not going to be a part of it. Come on. There, there, there's That's large true. tax dollars, a lot of money at stake here. That's part of it as well. Yeah. I mean, one thing I would say to I me mean, to your audience of conservatives, uh, and that is your children are most likely going to try marijuana, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stop it. They're going to do it. Mm -hmm. The question is, do you want them to smoke marijuana that came from a Mexican cartel? Yeah. Or do you want them to smoke marijuana that's been tested in laboratories grown by nutrients by a guy who spent his whole life like hiring PhDs to figure out this thing. Because those are your Sprayed choices. Sprayed with Paraquat. Yeah, those are your choices. <laughs> yeah. and, like, and, and by the way, in the black market, they use pesticides when they're growing marijuana that are harmful. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. we need to regulate this as soon as possible because patient safety is paramount. And the and, American and government going down using Paraquat and other herbicides and things like that. Oh, another very chapter, harmful, yeah. yeah, another chapter in our yeah. history that's yeah. just yeah. awful. Well, you know, I, I find it interesting. This is another thing conservatives don't understand, and that is the war on drugs is really a UN agenda. This yeah. the schedules and everything were created by the UN 10 years before Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs and implemented verbatim this UN agenda with the schedules, okay? And having all the, all the drugs under these schedules, it's a worldwide agenda. I would think that many conservatives and libertarians would be concerned about that aspect of the fact, as well as the fact that there's nothing in the Constitution that gives them the authority to do this. We had two amendments for alcohol prohibition, one to make it, give them, grant them the power to prohibit it because they don't have that under the Constitution, and the next one to remove that. Where's the amendment for ma marijuana or any of these other substances that they prohibit? And more people die every year off Tylenol and cold pills. Prescription drugs. Uh, yes. well just, but just even over the counter, not even prescription, even just over the counter mm -hmm. pills as mm -hmm. compared to marijuana, which uh, nobody dies. Nope. And so, you know, the argument becomes people think like, well, if we legalize it, all the kids are going to start smoking it. That's that's the argument. Well, that that's not, you know, that's totally false. And in, in you take the Netherlands, for example, and other countries where they have allowed marijuana to be tolerated or part of their culture, the usage of teens actually goes down. There are less drug overdoses and less crime. Yeah, and it's, we've this, seen- and this, Even in Colorado, they call it the Colorado Experiment. Well, the Colorado Experiment's working extremely well. And we've seen the Mexican drug cartels yep. taking a hit on their marijuana sales, yeah. plummeting after it became legalized. We've got to take a quick break, and we're going to be back in just a few minutes, and we're going to talk in the next segment about what's going on in Bulgaria, the massive political issues, as well as issues that would relate to our election here. We're going to talk to someone who is an expert on electronic voting in Bulgaria, as well as an expert on the kind of corruption you would get with that kind of uh, society. We'll be right back with Kevin Booth, Big Mike, and Ivan Georgiev. Hey, this is Bernie Sanders, and I'm quite upset. If you guys saw the Iowa caucus the other night, you would know that I worked extremely hard for these votes. And the people that were working in the Iowa caucus took what I worked hard for and gave it to someone else. A lying, cheating, horrible human being by the name of Hillary Clinton. Uh, uh, and I, I don't understand how anybody could like something like this. That you work hard for something your whole life and you earn something and then you're expected to give it to someone else who's not as deserving and is too lazy or more of a piece of crap than you are. What kind of person would even think about something like that? <sighs> Hey, that'd be you, Bernie Sanders. Guess you just felt the burn. <laughs> you can find more reports like this at Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure Ancient Defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there was a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. in Bulgaria is the reason that we are so poor. In Bulgaria, we don't have normal banks. That is, we don't have banks, we don't have banks. The Polish 500 people, while well, they were thousands, I mean tens of thousands. I'll tell my kids to tell you if something happens to me. They have been afraid of me when I came to the protest. We don't have capitalism and democracy, we have the mafia. The media here just directly local fanist for prestopnic criminal. Според мен не може да се направи извод, че запалванията, които последваха, са резултат. Who is attacking? Who is assaulting? Without any reason, or with any reason, it doesn't matter. The threat of uh, direct terror attack is so strong in Bulgaria. And what they did was, as soon as they started attack, they start to spread their uh, videos over the internet and start to spread their propaganda. Uh, for you out of Paris, France. Uh, several people have been killed. A shooting in central Paris. Tell me what you know. That I, I know that at, at least 10 ISIS fighters have been caught coming across the Mexican border in Texas. <laughs> 
Proszę, mi nam spokojnie. Nie, If Western civilization is not awake, it's a problem. You just saw the trailer for Ghost Nation. That's the working title of a new documentary by Kevin Booth. No stranger to those of you who are InfoWars viewers. Also joining us is Ivan Georgiev and Michael Stromietis, uh, also known as Big Mike. And all of these people converge now. Let's take the story to Bulgaria, okay? This is a long story. We've been talking these last couple of segments, how you began in Canada. Uh, as things began to uh, legalize, you, moved, you saw an opportunity in Eastern Europe, especially Bulgaria. Uh, scientists were available there. The government was amenable to uh, working with you and uh, Kevin Booth is uh, doing a documentary there some you guys got together on the earlier uh, oh, yeah. how the yeah. west was one yeah. documentary okay oh, yeah. so My you know God. each other yeah. so he calls you in and now let's talk about what's going on in Bulgaria because this uh, I believe is the path on which uh, to that that America is on where essentially everything is owned it's kind of a, a gangster mafia environment where the government has uh, total control over everyone, essentially what was the Soviet Union was like, uh, but it really hasn't come out of it like uh, some of the other countries like uh, Latvia and Estonia. Tell us about Bulgaria, Ivan. So basically, just a quick summary is like, um, as an example, so the government and um, particular business, their business associates actually own 90% of all media. Mm -hmm. So you just, if anything, if the truth, the truth comes out, uh, they just cover it up. They, they don't mention it, they just start um, just pointing to the uh, finger to the other direction or stuff like that. It's like crazy. It's, and, and, and all the time that what we're having is young people, educated people are leaving the country. Mm -hmm. So we were 9 million under communist rule. We are now 7. Ah. So mm -hmm. 2 million Bulgarians just left. That's, so one, we of the, have, that's we have one of the story threads in the film. We're showing like how the, the kids with money leave and all the kids that don't have money are forced to stay in the country. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So we have the same situation here to some degree. So it's a difference of degrees, essentially, in that, that we have a handful of media companies that control everything, work very tightly with the political uh, leaders to control the narrative, yet we have had the Internet uh, and alternative media that have come in to uh, to open things up, and that's uh, resulted in uh, the kind of anti-establishment uh, candidacies that we've seen from Donald Trump, from Ben Carson, from uh, Bernie Sanders, people who are challenging the establishment, challenging the controlled narrative, but you're not having that in, in Bulgaria. No, we have it, actually. I mean, we have the controlled narrative. All the medias are part of the mob mm -hmm. and the, the corrupt government, so I call them the mob, the yeah. government. So, no, but I mean about the alternative media. I mean, what is the, the situation? The alternative media is, is great. Well, we, we have been making progress the last three years only because of internet. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, Big Mike started uh, this uh, platform in Facebook. It's huge. It's close to a, a quarter of a million people. For Bulgaria, this is big. Mm -hmm. It's like Facebook page mm -hmm. that people can come in and tell what, what, what the problems that they have. So, and again, I mean, it's like... So this is like a, a Bulgarian Facebook that you created, yeah, Big Mike? It's a movement we created called Political Change, Change Now. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It, it has the biggest, biggest fan base at the moment, mm -hmm. f f com even compared to the political parties. Mm -hmm. and, and they control all the media. So it, everything is controlled, starting from uh, uh, the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs. You have the judicial system completely corrupted and controlled. You have the prosecutor's office controlling the judges and the police. Mm -hmm. And you have people on the streets protesting all the time because we kind of have the, the, the strongest social, social movement that we ever had in the, in, the, in, the, in the country the last 25 years. Like people, young people, and not young, people from all ages just go out the street to say no more. We want to change that. So, and, and again, I mean, the, the guys that are currently ruling, they're uh, the former bodyguards and uh, 
uh, relatives of the former communist leaders. Come on, now, our prime minister is the former bodyguard of the of the guy that ruled us for 45 years. That's how of course, the, the, the key to this, of course, to be able to bring people together mm -hmm. is the information, yeah. the internet, mm -hmm. and, and a documentary, for example. That's yeah. why I'm really anxious to see your documentary, because I think most Americans don't realize that we are headed on this same path, the same kind of control. And if we lose control of the internet, and there's a lot of ways that they're trying to control the internet, trying to watch everything we're doing. We've talked many times to William Binney, former head of the NSA, who said that uh, he spent his lifetime watching Eastern Europe, watching the Soviet Union. And he says, we have exactly the same infrastructure created now in America. We will go that direction unless we see what has happened in Eastern Europe. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely absolutely a, a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. And and some people would say, well, why Bulgaria? It's such a little country. Why does it matter? But for us, it's, it's a really interesting story that hasn't been told before. And this little tiny country has been somewhat bullied all these years with these huge neighbors, Turkey to the south and... Russia to the north, and and now you know the West is coming in, and and, and uh, it's a cautionary tale of what could happen to, to us. And it was absolutely amazing to see in that trailer people who are doing self emulation and everything. It's it's what we've heard from Gerald Salente. When people lose everything, they lose it. Yeah. And you're at the point now, it seems like in Bulgaria, where people will do anything to stop this tyranny. And we want to try to be able to uh, certainly wish you the best there, but we want to, people in America to stop it before it gets to that stage, to see the logical conclusion of what happens with these controls. And hopefully people in America, too, will realize, you know, it, it is one world, and, and hopefully people in America could help support the people of Bulgaria in some way to get yes. involved on, on what other, whatever level that they can. Because there's a lot at stake there, yeah. a lot at stake. People go Bulgaria, but Bulgaria, the border between Bulgaria and Turkey is a demarcation line between Islam and Christianity, yes. the East and the West. Yes, it's 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 the gateway to hell for for EU and us if we do not take care of what's going on. In Bulgaria. Very important, very important to see this documented again. It's Ghost Nation. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Kevin Booth, thank you. Ivan Georgiev, and Big Mike. We'll leave it at that. You thank go. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. As I pointed out earlier, Marco Rubio accused the president of the Border Patrol Union of being a conspiracy theorist, even accused Breitbart News of being a conspiracy website because they talked about his betrayal as he participated in the Gang of Eight, his betrayal of the GOP voters. Now, if you want to see a real conspiracy theory, look at the 32-page indictment of Cliven Bundy about the Bundy Ranch standoff. 
They accuse him of intimida a conspiracy to intimidate federal officers, a conspiracy to assault federal officers because it was a First Amendment protest with firearms. It's getting a lot worse, though, as we see what happened in Oregon. Look at this article from InfoWars, Department of Justice looking to tweak Patriot Act and to prosecute anti-government extremists. And of course, by their definition, and this is a definition provided by the Southern Poverty Law Center, anyone who pushes back against the government, who criticizes the government, is essentially an anarchist and a terrorist. They're not just content to lock up the Clive and Bundys. Now they're going after a sheriff in the area. We're going to talk to Sheriff Mack. Uh, this is a sheriff that he knows for a long time, a long association as a constitutional sheriff and peace officer. We're going to talk to him about the charges. Amazingly, they are accusing him of being a security leak. Can you believe that? In an environment where we have Hillary Clinton getting away with massive security violations, this little sheriff, because he talked to these demonstrators, is accused of being a security leak. Sheriff Mack, thank you for joining us. Uh, you know uh, this sheriff, Glenn Palmer, who is in Grant County. Tell us a little bit about what you know of him from a personal standpoint. Well, uh, ironically and uh, coincidentally, he was the first sheriff in America to take our constitutional training for his entire office. Mm. That was about 15 years ago, David. So oh. he is a constitutional sheriff. He takes his oath of office, and I quote, I take my oath of office very seriously, end quote. That is a direct quote from Sheriff Palmer. Uh, he is a small-town sheriff, but he has been fighting the Forest Service for uh, the fifth, last 15 years, as I mentioned, and he has been defending his uh, citizens against the tyranny and overreach of the Forest Service in writing ridiculous tickets that people in his county must go to Portland uh, in order to have a hearing or to, or to pay their fine wow. of three or four or five hundred dollars wow. for merely picking up dead wood off the ground. Wow. And that and is a very it, long distance. It, it, we were just out there. And of course, yeah. as they arrested uh, the Bundy brothers, as Lavoy Finnegan was shot, they were on their way mm -hmm. to speak at a meeting in this sheriff's county. 400 people were there to hear them speak. Uh, the sheriff was also invited to speak. And uh, right. so that, that was the point at which they arrested him. We went there uh, and talked to the man who had organized that meeting. He was a logger. He'd worked his entire life in logging there. Virtually all of the mills have been shut down because of the regulations of the Forestry Service and because of their mismanagement. He explained to us, and we had a long report, people can see that on Infowars.com. He explained to us how the mismanagement of the Forestry Service had resulted in the largest forest fire they had ever had there, decimated his private lands as well as the public lands that they administer. And he also told us, I, let me put this in to give people a context, he also told us that this uh, sheriff, Glenn Palmer in Grant County, had deputized some individuals to try to come up with a natural resources plan that would work for the people, work with the government, with the federal government who was trying to uh, uh, drive everyone out of, uh, out of business there. And of course, that was shut down by a judge. Well, the, the uh, federal government has been committing these types of crimes that they charged uh, the uh, Hammond family with uh, for the past 20, 25 years. When I was sheriff in Arizona, uh, they burned up half the side of our mountain, Mount Graham, which is the landmark of our entire county. It's where I grew up on that mountain in Boy Scouts when I was younger. It's the only place you can cool off during the summer unless you're in a swimming pool or indoors. That mountain is... Uh, our mainstay. We love it. And the Forest Service is doing a controlled burn, and they burn up half the side of the mountain. This has happened in Florida, where I've talked to sheriffs there that have said the same thing. Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, yes. California, yes. And, and Oregon. And yet, this Amazing. happened right here, just outside of Austin, close to where I live. We saw the same thing oh, happen yeah. because yeah. of mismanagement. Oh, yeah. And to put this in perspective, yeah. the Hammonds that you're talking about, and this is where this all began uh, before they took over the wildlife yeah. refuge, which I think many of us agree was a, a bad uh, tactic, a bad strategy. Nevertheless, uh, these, these people, the Hammonds, had uh, set a backfire to save their property. It burned 129 acres because it got a little bit out of control. The judge did not sentence them to the mandatory minimum that the federal prosecutor was coming after because she labeled them arsonists 
and terrorists. And he said, they're not arsonists, they're not and terrorists, terrorists. they didn't do any damage. That same year, there'd been three and a half million acres in Oregon that had burned mainly because of Bureau of Land Management, Forestry Service mismanagement. And right. so this tiny little bit of uh, property that was burned, they're sending these people to jail for the elder person. This is going to be probably a life sentence, well, five years minimum. And the judge who was yeah. there said it offended his conscience. And so now one of the th charges that they have against this uh, sheriff in Grant County, Glenn Palmer, is to say that he called well, for the no release charges, of the hammers. There's, complaints. there's no charges, but there are complaints about mm -hmm. him. And right now, in fact, I'm glad you brought that part up, David, because I want to know the charges. Tell me what they're investigating him for. Yes. Please tell me. Because yes. this is such a bogus political uh, attack on him for being a constitutional sheriff. Well, let's and tell people let what is right what is now. being reported in the local paper there. Blue Mountain Eagle is saying that uh, the police yes. chief in that area and a dispatch manager were among eight who filed formal complaints against Sheriff Glenn Palmer with the State Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, which licenses Oregon police officers. They sent the complaints to the Oregon Department of Justice, and they said well, uh, that uh, they thought that he was a security leak somehow. But David, that's a, that's, a bogus, that's a bogus complaint. That is not against the law. They have to come up with something concrete. That is not a law being broken. That is their opinion that he's a security risk. Tell me what he did to be a security risk, and I will tell you, comparing Palmer to the sheriff in Hardy County where the uh, whole entire incident took place, the Bundys and the occupiers were allowed by the federal government and state police and the sheriff to go into town hall meetings to meet with the sheriff in person, shake his hand, and meet with the FBI, yes. and meet with the, and go to church, and go to other meetings, and go into restaurants, and go into Safeway, yet nothing was done, and yet you call Palmer, who, who never had any crime commit, committed against, uh, by the uh, occupiers in his county, and now you're saying he's a security risk? Exactly. Why don't they go after the FBI and Oregon police and Sheriff Ward for doing nothing when they had him right in front of their face? Yeah, he, so, he, no, he didn't do anything. That's a good point, Sheriff uh, Mackey. He didn't do anything that the FBI and the sheriff in the adjacent county, Dave Ward, did not do. They also met with these guys. They talked to them. They allowed them to move That's back right. and forth. And now, though, the difference is, so, here's the difference, so of course, is, is that he's not sympathetic to the BLM's management practices. He's standing up with well, well, the I people the there. Big difference. The, the big difference is Ward, Sheriff Ward in Harney County, where it all took place, is not a constitutional sheriff. And Sheriff Palmer, where it did not take place, is a constitutional sheriff, so now they're trying to shift all the blame over to him, and I find it astonishing, and I think Sheriff Palmer's going to have a huge lawsuit against every one of those people, even the people who are investigating, especially the, the Oregon State Sheriff's Association. And what we plan to do at CSPOA is get everybody involved in helping us bring out uh, seven to ten sheriffs from all across the country, the best constitutional sheriffs. We're going to pay for their airfare. We want everybody to help us with this. But we're going to pay for these sheriffs, including Sheriff Clark from Milwaukee, to come out there and have a rally for Sheriff Palmer, let the citizens come and ask Sheriff Palmer questions, let them ask the questions to me and the other constitutional sheriffs that we will have there in John Day, Oregon, in Grant County, to uh, back up this wonderful, uh, in fact, the first CSPOA Sheriff of the Year, the first constitutional Sheriff of the Year back in 2012, Sheriff Glenn Palmer. Yes, and, and of course he also, rally, and we're working on it right now. He also uh, got their ire when he stood up and said, "We're not going to allow the enforcement of any unconstitutional edicts about the Second Amendment in this county." So you've got a sheriff well, here who has stood with the Constitution, who has stood with the people, right. and it is because of that, not because of any actions that he did, but because of his political right. views that they are coming after him to prosecute him. Thank you so much, Sheriff Mack. Uh, we'll be following that, and again, you can keep up with that at CSPOA.org. I hope that uh, people will follow that and. Uh, support that sheriff. I believe that he is uh, really an upstanding sheriff in that area. Thank you so much, Sheriff Mack. Thank you, David. That's it for tonight's nightly news. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients, that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, 
so you get deep restful sleep knockouts it infowarslife.com l-theanine hops flower extract lemon balm extract valerian root extract chamomile flower extract l-tryptophan extract melatonin and more all organic all the natural sources it's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece it has three milligram the standard recommended dose for an adult and it just synergistically puts everything in there. Infowarslife.com. That's Infowarslife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the Infowars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at Infowarsnews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.